primary ignition. Hey there, friends, fans, and collectors. Welcome to another episode of Binary Sunset Review. Today we're going to be taking a look at the PulseCon exclusive Mandalorian Rescue Set. Let's get going. I just want the kid. Activate the Dark Troopers. This box set was first revealed at San Diego Comic-Con. It was then pulled forward as the PulseCon exclusive, which allowed most collectors to pre-order it back in October. These are previous figures that we have seen before, retooled with different designs, different costumes, soft goods, and accessories. The four troopers that come with this box set are a Dark Trooper, the Mandalorian, Grogu, and Moff Gideon. Now, both the Mandalorian and Moff Gideon have soft good capes, and the Dark Trooper comes with a bunch of different accessories like flames and damage. It's really fun that one of the positives we've gotten in the last couple of years is Exclusives that were previously only for people who could attend these conventions are now online being listed available in tandem with the convention. It's definitely a different dance than we've been seeing with these previous collectibles, and it's a nice change in my eyes. It allows for more accessibility for others, and it doesn't flood the secondary market with as wild prices as they can be. Here we have the front packaging for the rescue set. And we can see just the brilliant image of all the figures that are in the box here. We see Grogu and Moff Gideon over there. Looks like he's got tiny little binders on his hand. As well as the Mandalorian facing off with the Dark Trooper. It's in a nice vintage collection design. We have the Kenner logo there on the bottom. The silver piping around everything. And the Star Wars Mandalorian logo right up there at the top. We have some great flavor text on the end of the box here. It says the Mandalorian the Rescue Set. The Mandalorian leads a crew on a rescue mission to Moff Gideon's ship, where a garrison of dark troopers, the advanced droids that captured Grogu, are waiting. They decide on a plan. Once they board the cruiser, the others will lead the attack and take the bridge. The Mandalorian will follow alone, eliminate the dark troopers, and recover Grogu. After a brutal battle with the dark troopers, the Mandalorian takes on Moff Gideon and bests the Imperial. Suddenly, the dark troopers return to claim Grogu. They are no match, however, for a mysterious cloaked figure that emerges on board from an unidentified X-Wing. The warrior destroys the Dark Troopers, and the Mandalorian says goodbye to Grogu as he sends him off to fulfill his destiny. What a great bit of flavor text. That is a whole recap of the finale right there, and beautifully written up in way more than we usually get. On the top of the packaging, we have some really great design. We have the title of the box set here in the left side with the Mandalorian logo. And then we have these three brilliant images that are the figures that are in the box set up and modeled, displayed as we saw them on the show. Now this is the Mandalorian and Grogu saying goodbye. This is Mando and Moff Gideon facing off for the Darksaber. And Mando using the Beskar Spear to best the Dark Trooper. Now last year's PulseCon exclusive was the Emperor's Throne Room. And the display for the packaging was also equally as great. Under the sheath, we have this great display in the package of the scene from Season 2. Now we have Mando on the left firing his whistling birds and his flames at the Dark Trooper. And we have Moff Gideon and Grogu in the little cell on the right. The, the imagery of this is really, really great. And this is all in the packaging as soon as you open up the box. This set was really meant to be displayed, and it's exemplified by this packaging. The packaging is designed to look like the interior of the Imperial Cruiser, where the Season 2 finale ended. And on the other side here, we have Moth Gideon and poor Grogu in the little binders. So let's open this package. Let's get these figures out. Here we get a nice glareless view as to what's inside the box. We can see the boxing is really detailed. It's set up in this beautiful scenery, like I said before. And we can really see in great detail now without the glare. So here's the accessory bubble. We get all the other accessories that come with these figures. We get Mando Z6, the other hands for the Dark Trooper. The blasters for both Moff Gideon and Mando. And it looks like the tiny little base to Mando's Beskar Spear. Almost a shame to remove these from the packaging, but let's take a look at these figures out of the box. Here we have our out of the box Sans packaging. And I really have to say, these PulseCon exclusives really do shine bright in terms of just the display, the packaging, all around, these figures are something special. Even though we have previously seen these figures in the past, 
each one of them has a different design to them, actually, now that I get them in my hand. So the Dark Trooper is a completely different figure. It's a completely unique design figure. It is not the Dark Trooper that we have received in the Vintage Collection Deluxe Box. It has battle damage. It doesn't have the shiny lights through its eyes. It has these flame accessories. It is awesome. This is the first time we're getting a Mando with his flamethrower attachment. Now, we've seen him use it tons of times throughout the show. We've seen other Mandalorians use it and get figures with it. But we have never seen it with Mando here. And so this is a unique piece. It's really, really nice. These accessories are also, for Mando, harder cast plastic. So a lot of them have, like, very tiny edges. And I'll do more in the close-up. But the plastic is actually a little bit harder. So it's not as malleable. And it really stays up in the form that you want it to be in. Really, really neat. Moff Gideon, obviously, for the first time, is coming with his soft goods cape. He's the same brilliant face design, same dark saber accessory. Now, Grogu, we've gotten so many different versions of Grogu down there, and I'm going to be doing a video that's the many different faces of Vintage Collection Grogu's. Because they've genuinely been similar throughout the last year, this one feels a little bit different. Now, his hands are obviously locked in the binders. I'll go through this in the articulation phase, but he seems to have a different kind of head model where he can tilt his head up for the first time in a in a way that we've never seen before. These are two uniquely designed figures specifically for this PulseCon exclusive, and it's really neat that we can get them in some of these amazingly cinematic poses that we remember right from the episode finale. This is also the first time that we're ever being given the Beskar spear in the 3 3 4 scale, and it's great to finally have this accessory with Mando, especially because it's now destroyed and he no longer has it. The painting and detailing for these figures really is at the standard we'd expect for the Vintage Collection. We're really able to get some posability and really put these guys in some amazing scenes that we saw them directly from the show. The advanced articulation of these figures, as well as the fun backdrops that come in the boxing, really do allow us to pose these guys in some cinematic poses. We have the Z6 jetpack over here. We have Mando's trusty blaster. We have, for the first time ever, the Beskar Spear. And we have some really great blast effects, both with Mando's flamethrower, which we've never seen before, and the Whistling Birds. Now, it's attached onto his wrist right now, but the Whistling Bird attachment goes right onto his... where it should, right on his wrist, right on his left gauntlet there. And there's a little cap that pops off that's right there in the front. Now, that's also a very tiny accessory. But that's where the whistling birds pop into, and so that also can be out here. In the center, we have Grogu in the binders. Now, this is a different Grogu mold. He has more articulation than I've ever seen with other Vintage Collection Grogus. This allows him to put his neck up and kind of look up or down, which is really nice as we get more inflection with these different characters. Onto the Dark Trooper, we have this flame effect that wraps around the figure. It also very easily comes off and is able to have him, you know, non flame we get his alternate hands there, the fist, the punchy fist, as well as his Dark Trooper blaster. And with Moff Gideon, we get his fabled Dark Saber, as well as his little blaster pistol. No particular articulation changes to Mando. This is the same figure we've been seeing for several years. It does look excellent with the soft goods cape. And as I said previously, so far, exclusives are the only way you've been able to get your Mando figure with a soft goods cape. We have articulation for little Grogu here. Now, the only advancement, it's a pretty big advancement, he's got a head joint here. Where as you can see, he can rock his little head up or down. It really adds to the character and the inflection and the way we can pose him. So I'm glad to have this advancement for Grogu. Articulation for our Dark Trooper. Look at how shiny he is. Uh, so I got him out here in Vitruvian Man. He's got great shoulder articulation with some butterfly joints. He's also got elbow joints, wrist joints. And down to the hips, he's got some really nice articulation in his Shakira hips here. He can also go fully around and fully robot spin. Uh, he's got some nice thigh joints, hip joints, knee joints, as well as feet. He's got some nice ankle joints. He does not have rocker ankles because of the robot build there. But he does have some very good articulation in the thigh where you can really get his knee moving to get some better leg articulation there. These guys are really some great troopers. It's it's really nice that we finally have these guys in the Vintage Collection, and they do live up to the articulation of the standard. Uh, with his head damage here, he's got his neck stuff coming out, but he still does have some pretty good rotation of his head. 
Uh, it doesn't have that much of a down because of this, but it does have a nice up look ability. Also, no articulation updates on the Moff Gideon figure. The big advancement is the soft its cape, as we can see it flow here, and the great face sculpt that we see here of Giancarlo Esposito. Now for pros and cons. Now, exclusives so far have been the only way to get the Mando Trooper with the soft goods cape. We know that he came with our HasLab Razor Crest, and now he's also coming in this PulseCon exclusive package. So if you didn't get either of these exclusives, you don't have accessibility to these figures. These are newly uniquely designed figures, this one having extra slots for his flamethrower and his whistling birds, as well as the Beskar Spear. Now, Moff Gideon and the Soft Goods Cape are only seen with this set, and these Soft Goods are really great expansions to already excellent figures, and it's great to see his character getting this addition. Another huge pro has to be the newly designed Dark Trooper figure. Now, we're getting our deluxe Dark Troopers in the mail, which create this neat playset, but this figure is entirely different and entirely new, with tons of battle damage, the ability to have the spear go right through his head like we saw in the show, and flames that wrap around him when he was flamed by Mando with his flamethrower. Another huge pro would have to be the boxing. Now with these PulseCon exclusives, the boxing is set up in a way where it can also be used as a display, and it's just, it's really attractive, in or out of the box, for collectors, and I really appreciate how this has become a norm for these PulseCon exclusives. Now we are paying a little bit extra for these, not only for the exclusivity of the figures, but also for the boxing, and I wish that was a little bit less. I would certainly recommend this set for any vintage collection collectors. It's a nice addition to our growing expansion of Mandalorian figures. This is a particularly memorable moment from the Season 2 finale, and to go along with our Luke light cruiser figure that we're going to get soon, it's just a great expansion into the Mandalorian Season 2 figures. Thanks for watching another episode of Binary Sunset Review. As always, I've been Mike. Your likes and your views are always greatly appreciated. Be sure to hit the subscribe button below if you haven't already done so. And comment below, let me know what you think about these figures, the boxing, and the availability of these exclusive figures from conventions. Have a great day out there, stay safe, stay sane, and remember, the Force will be with you, always. I'm just a simple man trying to make my way in the universe.